So today I want to show you guys a new technique that I'm trying as sort of a redundant system when we're shooting matches because oftentimes it can get overwhelming if you have to dial for more than one target. So what I did is I took some white electrical tape and I cut a line down the center and then I taped it onto my target. Please excuse the shots ripping in the background. We are having a wonderful match and blessed with awesome weather. So what I've been doing is on the last couple of stages is testing this and this is again not my idea. It's just something I thought I'd share with you guys because I saw some other shooters doing this in the US is to then stick the tape around my turret and then I've still got my dope written down on my dope card next to um, my optic. But then instead of having to reference that, I can just dial to where the next line is. The danger, however, is if you have targets out of sequence, for example, on our one stage where we shot from the rooftop, I had to dial to the, I just had to remember then dial to the furthest one on my second target and then come back a couple of clicks for the next target. And so far, it's been working really well and I showed the gentleman there in my squad the sort of system I've been running and it's it's been great so let me know if you guys have some tips to manage your dope at matches if you've seen this have you tried this before super simple to do I'm just using like a little whiteboard marker to make the markings and it's not something that has to permanently be on your scope and you can quickly just you know after you do your initial dope you write it on your dope card I just put the piece of tape on and in fact I've just kept the piece of tape on and just wiped it off and then remarked it for the next stage so quick and easy little tip for you to manage your dope if you go out hunting this could potentially be a very simplified version of our ballistic turret that I also showed you guys how to do which has been and this word is super overused in the sport but the DIY ballistic turrets for hunting has been an absolute game changer. And if you haven't seen that video, that's going to be linked over here somewhere. But anyway, guys, I hope you are having a wonderful day. And uh, we have three more stages left to go. And uh, I'm clean so far. Is this the match we're going to clean? I hope I didn't freaking jinx it now. Hang on. Before you go, I realized when quickly editing this, I did a horrendous job at explaining how this works. So I'm sorry about that and I'm gonna do a better job now. So here's how it works. You need some kind of tape. I chose electrical tape and then what I did is I took just a carpenter's knife and sort of split the difference all the way around. I just drew a neat little line. Well, a neat little line is relative down the middle. Then what you wanna do is you wanna take a piece of tape. The reason I chose white is because I'm gonna be uh, writing on this so I need something that will contrast nicely where my eye can pick it up easily so I'm going to peel off a section of tape um, that should be enough to get me around the turret you probably don't need to go around your whole turret but if you can that's going to help you out a lot so we're going to stick this on our turret like so it doesn't have to be the neatest thing in the world because this is again a redundancy system but it did actually help me out a lot in this match. So now let's go to zero over here and uh, what you want to do is take some kind of marker and uh, mark up your dope. So you'll see here on my dope card that I run on the side of my rifle my first dial is 1.3. Now usually when we start a match I will start when I'm ready and I will already have dialed for 1.3 but let's say for example there might be some positions where I need to engage, and this is a classic example of why you would want to use something like this. Let's say I need to engage three targets from three different positions, so that's nine shots, okay? You might be having to go back and forth, and sometimes we'll shoot holding over, but sometimes it is actually a little bit more precise to dial, especially when the targets are quite small. So I'm gonna mark my 1.3 like this. Uh, boom, so that is my first dial. Then my next dial is 2.7, which I am gonna mark uh, there, okay? And then my next dial is 3.2, which I'm gonna mark there. So now theoretically, when I'm on the stage, I can start at my 
okay? Boom, engage, and then without having to reference my dope card, I can just dial to the next one, boom, engage, dial to the next one, boom, engage, and you know, run through that sequence. And I'll also see on my dope card that I kind of split it up and I give myself my wind. In green, I usually do that either in green or in red. I'll do my wind as a separate number. And now at the end of the stage, just lick your thumb and you can wipe that off. I'm just using a whiteboard marker for this guy. And um, there we go, now we are set, ready to go. I'll do my dope for my next stage and just run through this. This worked really well. And in fact, it worked so well, I don't know if this played a role in it, but I cleaned my first match ever this past weekend shooting this setup, um, which was for me a very big deal because it's something I've been trying to do for a hell of a long time, but I'll, I'm gonna do a separate video on that and sort of the significance for me of that. Anyway guys, a lot of you also ask me, Pete, what chassis are you shooting? Is that an MDT? That's not an MDT or some of the comments that I saw on my Instagram. And by the way, if you guys aren't connected with us on Instagram, it's at Impact Shooting without the G. And uh, it really helps us out if you're connected to us on multiple platforms so you can see extra content and stuff like that. And uh, so please go ahead and follow me on Instagram and join us on Facebook. There's a whole bunch of extra stuff that gets posted on there. And it is just a really nice way to share more stuff with you guys. And while you're at it, please make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell turned on. It really helps us circumvent this algorithm that doesn't like pushing out our stuff. So yeah, this is a J. Allen chassis. It's not technically an MDT. When I got into Precision Rifle in, what was it, 2017, 2016, 17, if you had a J. Allen Enterprise chassis, it was, it was the bee's knees. You were the absolute business. And uh, I not wanted one for the longest time. And unfortunately, they went into some trouble with their business. And then MDT purchased J. Allen not too long ago, and this is actually the MDT version. Now, this red version is a very early version of the JAEs. Uh, it's a pre-production version, so I'm actually waiting on my production version to come in. Unfortunately, they're not available in red, but initially I was not too sold on the red, but after this weekend's performance, hell, I might have to make all my chassis red now. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thanks to MDT for bringing J. Allen back from the dead. I uh, I was super excited when I saw that. It's very cool. I hope this video helped you guys. Let me know if you are running some kind of similar system. It's just a redundancy system. In fact, in the past, I've uh, actually used a little dope card like this and I wrote with a pen and when it started raining, uh, it was like a wet erase pen. It started raining and I could literally see mid stage as my dope just started running away. Um, so yeah, a redundancy system is always worth it as that saying goes two is one and one is none so i hope this helped you guys a lot go out there smash some steel be great human beings because that is what we should be doing and uh yeah anyway okay love you guys lots god bless see you in the next one bye